So San Filippo uh, syndrome is a lysosomal storage disorder. Um, people at birth, uh, when they get it, it's uh, basically a, uh, it's a monogenic, um, a, you know, a mutation of the gene. Uh, there are four different flavors of it, A, B, C, and D, depending on uh, which gene mutates. And uh, at birth, you cannot distinguish uh, the uh, patients uh, at all from a normal birth. But since it's a lysosomal storage uh, disorder, so what happens is um, they have a uh, glycosaminoglycans, a um, kind of a sugar molecule in their uh, lysosomes that uh, uh, builds up and, and, and they do not have the enzymes that break it down. And as a result, when they are three years of age, you start to see manifestations of the disease. And initially, you will see development disorders. Uh, you will see that they are the, uh, lacking or forgetting uh, the loss of the learning skills. Uh, initially, that's how it starts. But it slowly progresses between the age of four and seven um, into other movement disorders, cognition ability, as well as it also affects their um, vital organs like cardiopulmonary, uh, you know, uh, 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 organs. And uh, it is very sad to see that it has become a terminal disease that 70% of the patients do not survive their 18 years of age. So diagnosis is generally done uh, through the tissue samples. Uh, you know, the, the assay of enzyme levels in the tissue samples, uh, that's one way to uh, diagnose it. Uh, the other way to diagnose it, of course, uh, nowadays through gene sequencing. So th those, those are the way. Um, and then distinguishing between A, B, C, and D, it'll be depending on the enzymes uh, that are missing, uh, then you can, uh, you know, um, distinguish between those uh, four different kind of disorders. Uh, but for practical purposes, A and B are more common than C and D. So A and B will have up to 90% of the patient population. Um, so the advocacy groups are, um, as you know, most of them are parents uh, of these children. And um, so what we are, uh, we partner with Team San Filippo, and Team San Filippo will reach out to other foundations uh, who believe their children will benefit from these uh, studies. So they will put together a coalition of foundations um, and um, but our partnership is with Team San Filippo. So what we adequately, uh, you know, uh, we want people to know and the entire community of San Filippo worldwide to know that they should reach out to Team San Filippo Foundation, Kath Kathleen Buckley, who heads the program. Uh, they go to their website, tsf.org. They should be able to uh, reach her and, uh, and we can coordinate. To the extent uh, there are certain patients who have already been exposed to gene therapy, before, we may not be able to include them in our study because they have uh, already been uh, exposed to gene therapy program. Um, so it'll be a confounding factor to know whether our drug helped them or it's the longer term effect of the gene therapy. However, um, to the extent they believe they can benefit from our drug, we will still include them in a compassionate uh, use, but they'll remain outside the study. So regardless of whether uh, you know, they can participate in the study or they want to be a part of the compassionate use uh, you know, uh, study, we promise to them that we'll provide drugs to them as long as uh, we can work out if they are in the other parts of the world outside the U.S., as long as they have a center that can infuse the patients and, and they have the local uh, you know, regulatory authorities' approval, we are happy to supply them uh, drug at our cost uh, so we can help the community.